server or hardware health really overall in solar winds it's some um, it's actually a feature that is existing in many solar winds products like npm npm has its own hardware health for cisco devices cisco routers for ibm switches for juniper and some other uh, well-known brands but for sam okay we do also have this what we call the server hardware health so reliability is important because performance is not always about CPU memory and disk utilization, not about latency or packet loss. It's also about how the physical servers are performing in terms of temperature, in terms of power supply and all that, right? Of course, if your servers are in the cloud environment, this is not really applicable to you because Amazon Web Services or maybe Azure is already the one managing the ser the physical server from you, right? Because you're 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 in the cloud, right? And that's how cloud works. You're just uh, borrowing the resources from them. Um, but if your servers are running on on premise, okay, this is something that you really have to take seriously, right? And as as we know, it's been a long standing practice to place these servers on cool environments, right? So to ensure that temperature won't be compromised for the server so that they would perform optimally as expected. So uh, the good news with SAM is that it can provide you all this information from your server. So if you go to your participants guide, okay, again, all right, it's going to tell you about server uh, hardware health. It's actually under on page 15, okay? So everyone, let's go to page 15 in your participant's guide. And you will see here the information about hardware health or server hardware health for SAM. Um, let me set your expectations that server hardware health in SAM out of the box is supported only on the following servers. Uh, Dell, HP, HPE, ProLion, IBM, Cisco, UCS, and Nutanix. Uh, servers okay so if you have uh, a server manufacturer manufactured by a brand that is not mentioned here um, unfortunately Sam cannot provide you an out-of-the-box server hardware health for that okay uh, but if you do have NPM installed together with server and application monitor you guys can create this what we call the universal device folder for it um, the SNMP monitor of SAM is only applicable for searching the MIBs of that device, but it's not a replacement of Universal Device Polar, really, if you look at the SNMP component monitor details. But let's focus on what is out of the box, okay? So again, it's covered only on the following, Dell, HP, HPE, ProLion, IBM, Cisco, UCS, and Nutanix. So it's going to give you fan speed, power supply. I believe Luong asked this question. Can you monitor dim modules? Yes, you can. Server hardware health can tell you about it. CPU, disk space, and more. Okay, It's going to give you all those information um, for that server. And for better details on that, the complete uh, details of server hardware health can be accessed on the Success Center link. Okay, well, um, if let's click that so we can uh, look at the requirements. Okay, hardware health monitoring requirements is actually not that complicated because a hardware health, okay, or server hardware health is automatically installed as soon as you added this particular server during the discovery. But then again, oh, for as long as your server is from Dell, from HP, from IBM, and Nutanix then you would have hardware health out of the box. Now, that's not actually the, the last thing to do. So it, it, for instance, you have performed network discovery and added those servers in SAM. Okay, the next thing to do is to ensure that, actually before you even perform discovery, okay, it's actually best, the best thing to do is install the software Okay, that came with your server. What is the name of that software? It depends on the server. For Dell, it's called Open Managed Server Administrator. Okay, for HPE, that's called the HP System Insight Manager. Okay, for IBM, it's called IBM Director. Okay, 
Uh, for Cisco UCS, for Nutanix, uh, there are also specific requirements for it, for hardware help, for Nutanix, uh, class clusters, um, review the, 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 uh, the Nutanix monitoring requirements. If we do that, this is the Nutanix hardware health monitoring requirements. Your Nutanix should be running Nutanix Acropolis as early as 5.10. Uh, you should have the AHV or the Acropolis Hypervisor Nutanix. Make sure that you also have VMware vSphere and at least Microsoft Hyper-V 2008 R2. Uh, these are your options to deploy Nutanix, and these are the ports and all that stuff, okay? So you just have to follow along on the uh, Success Center for you to completely set up Nutanix hardware health, just in case you have Nutanix environments out there. Um, so again... Make sure that you install the software that came with the server. Why? Why would you install it? Okay, because this is this software has API endpoints that server hardware health will just call. So Sam, what it will do is it will communicate to the software via API, and whatever that is obtained by the software will be presented in Sam. So without the software, you will not have server hardware help for these servers. Okay. But once you have installed it, when you did the discovery, server hardware help will be immediately uh, enabled for you. Okay. So you may be wondering, how does this look like? How does this hardware help look like? We can go to the Orion demo again. Okay. So let's go to the main page here. And let's, let's look for a Dell server. Okay, I believe this one. Oh, this one is a Dell switch. No, this is not the, what we want. We want a, uh, a server here. It could be showing hardware health already. If not, then we can look for another server, guys, okay? I'll look the asset inventory of this server. Yeah, this is hosted on VMware. So let's look at the VMware itself or the virtual machine itself. Yeah, it's a Dell Power Edge. Yeah, definitely. There you go. This is what we want. Okay. So this is the uh, hypervisor or the host that hosts those uh, operating systems or those virtual servers that you saw earlier. So looking at this one, this is a Dell Power Edge R610 server. Okay. And I'm beginning to think that this is an EXXI host. Yeah, this is a type 1 hypervisor. So, yeah, uh, as you guys can see here, Dell Open Manage 8.2 Manager. So, that let's, so if you have Dell Open Manage installed, you will have this current hardware health. So, what do you have? What do we have here? So, you will see fan status. How is the fan? How are the fans doing on that hypervisor or in your host? Since this is the host, you don't want to lose this host because it's going to impact all the virtual machines that this uh, ESXi host is hosting right in the first place. So you want to make sure that the fans are working fine. The power supply, how's the power supply? Power supply is actually the one of the most common devices that are ignored, you know, but we can't really discount the fact that power supply is the heart of the server itself. It's the one supplying the power to all the components. Without this, it's going to destroy everything, right? And, and sadly, it's commonly ignored. People are complaining, why is my software not performing really well? Why are we having trouble? It could be because the power supply is already failing. Okay, so this is something that you really want to take it seriously. And server hardware health, thanks to server hardware health, it will tell you how's the power supply doing. Temperature. Uh, system board ambient temperature. Okay, if it's running, if it's running really hot, you know, there's a tendency for the processors or for the components to throttle down. So the performance, so that can definitely impact performance of some sort. Memory. So uh, this is Luong's question yesterday. How are the memory modules doing? Um, so if you click on in a a one, right? So you're gonna see there. Okay, what's going on here? It's uh, the uptime of the memory module. It's good. Uh, you can also look at past 24-hour time, and you can already see those things, right? 
So yeah. Uh, CPU. Okay, the Xeon. So there are two physical Xeon processors by Intel, and both of them are good. Okay, so server hardware health is a very important, yeah, really, really important thing to have or to know about your server. Okay, this is this is speaking of reliability and uptime of your server. Okay, um, Raga vendor, Dell operate Dell uh, Open Manage can integrate with Sir with Sam since it's a third party app. Uh, this Dell Open Manage uh, is just read by Sam uh, Raga vendor via API. But if you want to manage Dell Open, if you want to monitor Dell Open Manage itself. It has if it has API endpoints, you can use the SAM API pollers to do that. Let's say you want something else aside from fan power supply, temperature, memory, and CPU out of Dell Open Manage. As long as there's an API endpoint for it, SAM can monitor it. And I will be covering API pollers soon. It's part of our agenda today, okay? Raga vendor for the uh, uh, please send your questions to all participants as well so that everyone can benefit from your question. Okay, if you don't mind. Also, you're saying here in your question, you mean it's a separate app you need to install? Yeah, for server hardware health in particular, Dell Open Manage is a separate app that you need to install in the server itself. Without this Dell Open Manage installed in this particular uh, Power Edge R610, we won't be able to track current hardware health. Okay. All right. So are there any questions, guys? Any other topics that you'd like to see covered about hardware health? So again, this is only covered for Dell, IBM, HP, HP ProLiant, and Nutanix uh, servers. Okay. All right, so let's now continue on with other topics. We still have, oh, the, the, the rest of the other topics here are pretty short, like cloud monitoring and container monitoring. And then afterwards, we can then proceed with uh, building and implementing custom templates. So cloud monitoring and container monitoring in SAM. Actually, cloud monitoring is not specific to SAM. This is a feature of the Orion platform. But let me just give you guys a short demo of what you can do with cloud monitoring. And Sam, if you if still in the same Orion demo site, if we head over to my dashboards, go to home and choose cloud. Okay. So you will see here your cloud infrastructure. So this is the cloud server infrastructure here. And you also see here the cloud applications. This is what's really concerning about SAM. Okay, so you just treat your cloud applications as you would with on-premise. Okay, so for example, you have the SharePoint server on this Azure uh, Azure host on on Azure or Microsoft Azure. So you will see here the different components. Okay, or yeah, the component names or the components in the SharePoint server. So this is similar with uh, how you would monitor it on-premise. Okay. So in, of course, if you have servers in the cloud, you would monitor it using agents, okay? So you can also see here your cloud infrastructure. So you can see those things here if you want to know more about it, right? So you would also see the information, whether it's from AWS or from Azure, you would see all these information, okay? So that is how you would uh, monitor devices or how you would use SAM to monitor cloud instances. Well, if you were curious, how do you add uh, cloud accounts in here? You can just simply click on cloud infrastructure monitoring settings and then click on add the cloud account. Currently, guys, we only support two major cloud providers, Amazon and Azure. Um, a lot of people are asking before, do we offer support for Google Cloud Platform or maybe Alibaba Cloud? At the moment, we don't have it. We only have AWS and Azure. Okay, so if you click on the say AWS, just click on monitor AWS and you just have to enter your AWS credentials here. 
for more information on how you can find these credentials, you can click on the link or you can contact AWS technical support for that. Um, for Azure, it's a lot, well, there's a lot more information that you need to enter, like the Azure Active Directory tenant ID uh, and all that stuff. That's what I'm saying, tenant directory ID, subscription ID, secret keys, and all those things, okay? So that is how you would add a cloud account in SolarWinds. And you can start then monitoring your applications out there in your cloud servers using SAM or within the Orion platform. Okay, now the next uh, topic that I will want to cover would be monitoring containers. So containers, as you guys can see here, container monitoring. Um, containers are like virtual machines, but it just so happened that containers are like lightweight virtual machines. Because, you know, with virtual machines or VMs, it sits on top of a hypervisor, right? Whether it's type one or type two hypervisor, but for each virtual machine, it still needs to load an instance of the operating system for every virtual machine out there, right? But forget about loading operating system for each virtual machine with containers because containers doesn't need to do that. Containers are just like deployable lightweight virtual machines without the need to do to load those operating systems and all they just need to do is load the application that's hosted in those containers so how does the container work so containers really communicate directly to the operating system kernel of the host so it doesn't need to load its own operating system so what will be the benefit of that if it doesn't load its own operating system definitely you can save a lot of hard drive resources and a lot more uh, you know, resources, because for every virtual machine, it has its own RAM, it has its own CPU cores, it has its own operating system. Containers don't need that, okay? I mean, of course, containers would need a RAM, would need uh, some, some form of hard drive resources, but it's not really as huge as virtual machines. So, Sam... Uh, can can monitor containers, okay? Whether you deployed containers in Kubernetes or uh, Apache, Mesos, uh, or if you orchestrate, let's say you have multiple containers or a cluster of containers in Kubernetes or in Docker, or maybe you have this Apache Mesos, then Sam can monitor those things, okay? So let me show you guys an example of how Sam can monitor those containers. Um, but by the way, on your participants guide, you would see there, okay, under page, uh, where is that? Container number 17, okay? On page number 17, you would see containers here. Okay, so you can click on the links for how to add containers, for how to manage containers, how to delete a container. I'm not going to go through the step-by-step -step process, guys, for the benefit of time. But for now, we'll click on the link for manage container services. So this is where you would be able to know more about it. And Sam and Vman uh, supports that, okay? So for the demo, you can we're still, we will still use the same Orion demo site, okay, for this. And well, let's go to my dashboards. Let's look for a container on the app stack. Okay, let's look at environment. And you will see these containers here. Okay, so as you guys can see, containers can also be added in app stack. As we know, containers are like lightweight virtual machines. Each container hosts its own application. So as you guys, you guys can see here, this one is hosting uh, RabbitMQ image. Okay, this one, what about this? This is hosting, uh, call it, yeah, RabbitMQ. So this is this is a cluster of containers, okay, hosted perhaps in Kubernetes or Docker. If you click on show names, it's gonna tell you, hopefully, what are they? So let's say Awesome Euclid. Let's click on Awesome Euclid and go to details of the container. So this is the container monitoring in SAM. Okay, so it tells you the container metrics like container uptime, okay, the container 
you, you would already see here whether the container what what is the deployment method of the container it's deployed via docker okay, it's a docker entry point rabbit mq server that's the image command to deploy this container image details the name of the image the environment variables and the app stack environment how is this container or lightweight vm related to the application that this is hosting and all the other ones involved in your environments so it's going to tell you those things even container load so that's how sam can monitor containers okay so again for more information on how to deploy uh, containers, whether it's from Kubernetes, from Docker, or Apache Mesos, please access your participants' guide. Um, it's mentioned there, okay, on page 13, or not page 13, but rather, uh, yeah, page number 17, rather, okay? So, guys, are there any questions, concerns so far about cloud containers monitoring server hardware health and all that okay so guys just post your questions in chat okay so we won't forget it all right let's now proceed with app insight okay so app insight for applications guys page 18 on your pg let's go there okay let me know if you are in page 18 right now. Please let me know in chat, guys, if you're in page 18 already or if you are in the page that says App Insight. I just wanted to check with you guys if you're there. Thanks, DV. What about the others? Are we on the same page? Because I want to make sure we're on still on the same page. <laughs> and I want to make sure that you're still with us. <laughs> right? Almost there. Almost weekend, right? <laughs> I know this is a uh, wealth of information that we're telling you, but I hope you're learning something, right? Okay. App Insight. So, Deviant Prabha, thank you. What about the others? Are you on page 18 in Participants Guide? So, in your Participants Guide on page 18, let's take a look, okay? Monitor with App Insight for application. So, App Insight, okay? It's just another set of templates that are built into SAM. But these are what we call the special kind of templates. Why are they so special? What makes them different from the rest of the pre-installed or custom templates out there? App Insight is a SolarWinds proprietary template, okay, that can help you identify or provide additional or deeper insight about the following applications. So we have App Insight for the four applications that I've highlighted here in your PG. Okay, it says here App Insight for AD. App Insight for Exchange, for IIS, and SQL. So you would, when you look at SAM built-in or pre-installed templates, there are already built-in templates for Active Directory. And you've seen that, Active Directory 2016 or 2019 Services Encounters, Windows Server 2019 Services Encounters, Exchange, IIS, what is it, version 6, version 7, version 10, SQL. There are SQL templates out there, even on THWACK, okay? But for you to have a deeper dive, deeper insight on those applications, SolarWinds is kind enough to provide these app insight templates. But take note, guys, since this is a template, it is composed of components, right? It will still use your license. So if you're in the component-based licensing, okay, app insight for Active Directory will utilize 50 uh, components. Exchange will utilize 30 components, 30 components. IIS and SQL will, com will consume 50 components as well. Take note of that. It might be in the exam. <laughs> I believe one of the exam objectives is will ask you uh, how many components does App Insight for Active Directory contain. You can always look at the Orion platform anyway to look for the exact number, but 
Yeah. Active directory, the only different is exchange. It's 30 components. Active directory, IIS SQL app inside, 50. Okay. One of the things that people are asking about app inside is can I disable specific components in app inside? The answer is in some components, especially if it came from solar winds, no, you can't. Because App Insight, if you think about it this way, guys, App Insight is created by Solar Winds for Sam to provide you a story about your Active Directory, about your Exchange, IS, and SQL. If you disable something in there that is not intended to be disabled by Solar Winds, it's not going to give you the complete story. It's like telling Shakespeare to stop telling about what is that work of Shakespeare <laughs> so yeah it's like telling the author to stop telling this which will break the story D does that make sense to you or maybe not so if, if an author of a poem or, uh, or a novel is trying to tell you something and you may be thinking oh it should be like this should be like that it's not the intention of the author anymore it's not the complete story that the author is intending to say anymore so if you think about it, it's not really what it is anymore, right? So it's like it's like the same with solar winds app inside. If you try to disable some components in there that are proprietary to solar winds, it's not gonna tell you the story how it's meant to be mentioned. It's not gonna get you're not gonna get the complete insight, okay, of what solar is trying to tell you about your active directory change, IS or SQL. Okay. But I'm sure I've seen on the Slack community that there is a request to disable some components in there because again for the for the conversation about licensing uh, and I think it's it's still an existing feature request out there a lot of people are also agreeing to that request uh, we, we, we won't know if it, if, we, if it will be granted but anyway um, anyone here who's on not on mute can you please uh, press the mute button on your uh, on your speaker for now. Thank you. All right, so let's proceed, guys, with the demo. Um, Ragavendra has a question. I'm using SQL, the same question I have that I don't, some components to be, yeah. Because Ragavendra, it's like asking the author to, to turn off some chapters in the book and the author will not be able to tell you the complete story about it. It's like that. That's the analogy. But we understand, we respect the fact that People would like to disable some components that they don't really need out there, and that's understandable. That's why if you look at the flap feature request, there's a long-standing request there. So let's, without further ado, let's move on to the demo. Uh, app inside, app inside, sure. Um, we'll be using the Orion demo still. That's the good news there, <laughs> okay? You can follow along if you want. Okay, so Orion demo, that's solarwinds.com. If you have a second monitor there, go open Orion demo. If you want to follow along, please proceed. Okay, um, so from here, all right, so my dashboards, all right, let's go to applications. And under applications, you would see a couple of objects like Active Directory, Office 365, IIS, SQL Server, Exchange. Let's start off with Active Directory. But as soon as you press Active Directory, you will see this Active Directory application summary. This is not this is not App Insight yet. This is just the summary of your Active Directory map or application. If you have multiple eight Active Directory domain controllers, maybe one is the primary and the other ones are read only domain controllers, or maybe you have replication servers in other offices. It'll tell you about it, okay, in the Active Directory application summary. So you guys can see here, there's an Active Directory map. This is custom map, okay? This is not pre-built to, to Active Directory. And I've shown you earlier a bit of, or a glimpse on how you can at least create the same, a similar map, something to that extent, right? Um, you would see application with problems. And as of the version 2020.2, oh no, sorry, uh, Sam 2019.4, okay? You would see this trust summary. Okay, widget. And this is very useful because you would see already the, the trust between domains or forests. So let's say this one, it's on the same .lab domain. 
or sorry, forest. Okay, this is Singapore.lab domain. This is Tokyo.lab uh, domain. Okay, you would see the trust, whether it's one way, two way, transitive trusts between domains. So you would already see it right here. If you're also into federation, let's say you have another forest, okay, in active directory, maybe your company bought another company, you know, mergers and acquisition, right? So instead of implementing or migrating their active directory to yours, you can just implement trust. So that's federation. So you would see whether the trusts are both ways or is it one way trust, two way trust, and all those things. So you would see non-transitive, if it's transitive trust, if it's forest transitive, if it's cross-organization, all these things, okay, right off the bat, thanks to this trust summary widget. This is a very handy widget. The first time I saw it, I'm really, I'm really flabbergasted or amazed. Right? I'm really happy to see this because this is really a great thing to have. You would already know uh, right away. Um, so that is for Sam. But that's not App Insight yet. If you want to click on, look at what how App Insight looks like. Let's click on one of the domain controllers here. So you would see all of them are being monitored by App Insight. Okay, so all of them are App Insight. Uh, App Insight on this particular server. Okay, so let's click that. And it's gonna tell you App Insight. So you can filter of. Uh, well, this one is shown for the last 24 hours. You can always uh, change the time. It's not going to do that. I'm just showing you that it's possible. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what do we have here? So this screen is uh, let's increase the font. So, so you guys can see here we have still have real time process explorer, service control manager, real time event log viewer. Okay. Um, application details. So you would see the domain name. You would see the domain object. So this is. These things, the domain objects with these line charts or bars, okay? These are the proprietary SolarWinds components. That has been or proprietary uh, technology or charts created by SolarWinds for you, okay? So this is not something that you can disable in the template itself or in the App Insight for Active Directory template itself. So what do we have here? You will see the amount of domain controllers. So there are eight domain controllers. And if uh, so, you would also see uh, the the statistics about this server. Okay, that says uh, lingering objects, user accounts cannot be resolved. So far, so good. Everything is zero. Account name must change. Account was locked out. Uh, system events. What about context switches per second? So if there's a dip on that, you would see it right here. Okay, so you could also correlate them with other metrics, okay, without you manually creating those performance monitors in Windows. I understand you, this is normally done manually by creating performance monitor or creating an MMC, you know, in Windows Server. No more, because right here, it's already correlated for you by App Insight. So what else do we have here? Uh, processor queue length. Yeah, this is an important metric to know about, right? Replication events on the node. So, failed re any are there any failed replication events? Are there duplicate uh, replications? Are there any pending replications? So it's going to tell you about that. Very important in Active Directory, right? Policy events. Are there any domain policies changed? Kerberos policy was changed. Uh, very important stuff about security, right? Kerberos. Logged on events. LDAP metrics, yeah, the bind time, successful binds, searches. And one more thing that really made, made me happy the first time I saw App Insight is this. Replication summary, it's going to tell you that. Uh, also, environment for Active Directory, you would see App Insight as well. Oh, no, sorry, App Stack, okay, within uh, this App Insight. Um, domain controller details. Yeah, this is really amazing. Right? You can see here which one is the domain master, which one is the schema, which one is the RID, the PDC, the infrastructure manager. So if there are any changes on the schema, let's say you change organizational units, you would know which one will win if you have multiple domain controllers. Of course, the schema master 
will be the winner because it's the master, right? If there are changes in the domain, whoever's the domain naming master would win if there are multiple domain controllers. So you would be able to see right off the bat who is the schema master, who is the domain naming master, the RID, the infrastructure manager, and the PDC emulator, okay? And site details, okay, like this one, um, which sites east, west, and all that, the main services, uh, processes and services. So the processes and services in the domain controller itself, CPU load, physical, virtual, anything in red here, you would already know right off the bat, thanks to App Insight for Active Directory. Now let's take a look at the template for App Insight for Active Directory. If you go to application and choose SAM summary, you would click on manage applications and under application monitor templates you guys would see active directory as well but let's take a look at app insight for application like i told you there are four okay so um you cannot make a copy of it nope unlike with the other ones you can make a copy but you can edit it okay but like i said guys so again, if you made a change in the template, it's let's say you change the polling frequency, the, the, the polling frequency is 600 here. If you change this number, it's gonna impact everything, okay? But notice here, these are the components, proprietary components of solar winds. You cannot disable it, you cannot set thresholds, it's just description and user notes. That's the only thing you can do here. And people on Flack are requesting to turn off some things that they don't want, but Again, it's like telling the story author to shut down or shut down some chapters, which will not going to complete the entire story anymore. It's a different story now if you'll ask the author to do that. But yeah, but in some of the uh, things like this one, Windows Event Log Monitor, sure you can disable them. I believe you can, but I'm wrong. You can't, <laughs> right? Yeah, see? You can only change the thresholds, fine, but you cannot, there's no enable, there's no disable option here. Because again, it's like telling the author to shut down certain chapters. It's not going to complete the entire novel anymore. So it's, App Insight will defeat its purpose if users will be allowed to turn off stuff in here. So <clears throat> that's the expectations for App Insight, and again, for Active Directory, it's amounting to, okay, it's amounting to, well, it says here NA, but for Active Directory, that is 50, Exchange 30, IIS, and SQL, that's 50 licensed components. Now, let's proceed with App Insight for Exchange, okay? So this is the Exchange application summary. Let's look at the one of the App Insight for Exchange here. Let's click on Microsoft Exchange on this server. Okay. So what do we have here with uh, App Insight for uh, Exchange? Okay. So. Ragavender, I believe I answered your question already. You can customize the thresholds on the template, but you cannot disable them. But as you've seen in some components, you can only put notes, and that's it, description. You cannot change the way it should be. Because again, that defeats the purpose of App Insight. Okay, App Insight for Exchange, uh, you would see here application details, like what is the status, the Exchange server version, if the, say, if the exchange is on a cluster, there is an availability group or DAG. You would see the exchange DAG name, the other exchange servers in the cluster. A file share witness. So, you know, in cluster, there should be a witness. So if there are any problems or synchronization problems between different servers in a cluster, the witness will be the decider or the judge who is the winner, <laughs> all right? So you would already see it right off here. Where is that file share witness? Where is it located? That's a great thing to know, right? This is done manually before. Mailbox database status. So you would see here which mailbox database is suspended, which ones are healthy, 
mailbox database size, average mailbox size, right off the bat, summarized for you guys. Mailbox database copies, which mailboxes have, dis have been dismounted, have failed, are healthy, suspended, which exchange server is it hosted, you will already know it right here. Information, store, mail database. If I adjust my zoom size, it's, it will not skew the view. Because it's, it's, it's skewed it for some reasons. Yeah, could be my browser. But yeah, mailbox, database, cache size, version buckets, alloc. So these are exchange metrics, okay? Exchange server, RPC request is sent per second. Latency average. So you can compare and contrast it with other metrics, okay? Um, it's red because it's already exceeding thresholds. Storage, right? Very important, okay? Replication, okay? Since it's in a uh, an availability group or an or in a tag or database availability group, therefore, replication is uh, is something that you want to make sure it's okay. Um, application connection. So you still have application dependency mapping in here. That's the good thing about here, guys. So you can correlate whether the issue is coming from applications that are trying to connect to your exchange. Alerts, very important thing to have as well. Uh, also the app stack environment, replication status checks. Okay, so you would already identify if there are problems. Um, Users by mailbox size. So you would know which user is about to become the mailbox, about to almost use all the mailbox size. And users by messages sent, who is this user that always and has the highest number of messages sent <laughs> in the organization. <laughs> right? Critical processes and services in the exchange. You already see it right here. Also exchange event log message details and a lot more information, guys. Thanks to App Insight for Exchange. Okay, again, you can change this to whatever time period that you want. You may be wondering, are there reports, are there alerts related to App Insight? Yes, there are. If you go to reports, all reports, and click manage reports, there are reports about App Insight. Okay, so it's uh, all in the report manager. And also in alerts, if you go to alerts and click on manage alerts, there are app insight related alerts. Alert me when a mailbox database file is low on space, on IIS, on SQL, and all that. Okay, so let's take a look now at other app insights. Let's look at app insight for uh, IIS. So let's click on manage applications and click on Ma application monitor templates. And let's look at, or actually let's click on assigned application monitors. Or you know what? Let's just go to dashboards again, sorry, and click on IAS. And let's click on one of the app insights here for IAS. So this is how app insight for IAS looks like. So you would see the IAS sites. Okay. You would see those IAS sites, application pools, the uh, connections. It's a bit off the screen. Yeah, so there. Application connection or the site connections, metrics, um, ASP.NET, cache, um, IAS average CPU and memory usage. So you can see physical memory, you can see virtual memory as well. Um, what else do we have here? You will see the top 20 page request by average server execution time. So you would see it right here. Uh, who is this application that is uh, requesting a lot from your IIS web server based on server execution time as well. So you would know which could be that the application, that app that application is bogging your IAS server. <clears throat> Database response time, um, you would also see it right here. Application connection still from application dependency mapping. This is Sam. 
uh, processes and services, environment for uh, this is app stack, and you would also see IIS average network traffic and application availability. So all these things are given to you by App Insight for IIS. Now the last App Insight that I want to show you guys is App Insight for SQL Server. So if we go to Applications and choose uh, SQL Server, this will tell you about SQL Server summary. Let's click on one of the App Insights for SQL Server. Now, in case that you integrated DPA or Database Performance Analyzer, which is a separate SolarWinds product that from the name itself, monitors database performance. You would see it right here in App Insight for SQL. You would see a separate, um, you would see a separate sub view, okay, or left navigation tab for DB performance. DB performance is from DPA. If you don't have DPA integrated with the Orion platform, you won't have this DB performance information. Um, this is actually similar to what you can see in DPA, but right now I believe this one is not monitored by DPA. That's why it's not showing you, just showing you a sample map. It's not giving you the actual thing. Anyway, let's go to summary. Okay. So let's go to the summary here. Uh, Raga vendor, I believe we're going fast. Can we have go slow since Sam is the most important topic? Um, well, I'm trying, I'll try to be slower, Raga vendor, but please also understand that we only have limited amount of time at this point. We still need to cover uh, building templates, okay, and also creating custom scripts, but we can always answer your questions during the lab time, right. We can always recap if you need during the laboratory time. Okay, but for now, let's complete with the other topics, okay? Hope you understand. TV, can we have this for any other Linux-based applications like DNS, DHCP? You're asking about App Insight, TV? Um, at the moment, App Insight is only for the four applications that I mentioned. Active Directory, SQL Server, Exchange, and IIS. App Insight for other applications, mostly in Linux, not yet available. I'm not sure if SolarWinds will implement that in the future. But for now, you can stick with the templates given to you by Sam. You can build your own templates. You can even run scripts. It has to be built by hand. Hopefully in the future, there will be App Insight for it. Now, App Insight for SQL. So you will see here all the databases. You will see the, the SQL server metrics like buffer manager, cache. Um, yeah, this one, buffer cache hit ratio. This is one of the most important metrics, okay, in, in, in database performance. This is measuring the amount of hits against the disk as opposed to the buffer cache. Because as we know, guys, database engines would prefer to read memory or RAM rather than read off the disk because that means performance, right? You would rather have your SQL execution plans stored in the cache as opposed to always accessing the, the physical disks because accessing physical disks is costly to database performance. So this is something that you could look at to, to check whether your SQL server or whatever database engine like, like Oracle is checking the disks that much or is it checking the cache? It shouldn't be checking the disk that much. It should be checking the cache. So buffer cache hit ratio is your go-to metric. Lazy writes per second, pre-list stalls per second. And there are a lot of other metrics like cache used per minute, also latches and locks, okay? Database performance, um, are there, how many SQL queries are blocking other SQL queries from being processed? Okay, so it's like in the grocery store, uh, when you line up for the checkout, 
okay, in the checkout counter, you would line up there and you may be wondering what's taking so long for you to be processed by the cashier. Maybe the person is being processed right now is having some argument or having trouble with the credit card or what have you. It's causing a long line already. So that person is the SQL query that has exclusive access to the cashier. It's blocking all the other SQL queries, which are you guys, okay, from being processed. So that can definitely introduce database performance problems. So latches and locks can, uh, deadlock, yeah, these things can definitely uh, tell you about in App Insight for SQL. SQL Server metrics like full scans per second, longest running transaction time, and a lot of other stuff in here, okay? Uh, too much too much details. You can see it right off the bat from App Insight for SQL. SQL error logs. Yeah, this is also important to have. Processes in the SQL Server. Was their CPU load? Are they impacted already? So yeah, everything is green so far. Memory. Yeah. Databases or database engines love RAM for a reason. Because again, like I told you earlier, uh, it's better to access the memory than the disks. So the queries, how they are accessed or executed are normally stored in cache and cache are in memory. So the the, the memory is an important and very integral part of database performance. So that's why we are giving you this very detailed amount of information about how is your SQL server accessing your memory, like SQL cache memory, total server memory, memory grant spending, cache hit ratio, it's on the warning stage already. So this is something to take a look at. Um, and a lot of other memory related info, just for the memory, as you guys can see here. Pages, yeah, pages. In SQL Server, page is the basic building block of a data or in the database. So if the pages, the basic building blocks are compromised, you would already see it right off here. Like page life expectancy, uh, these things. Uh, connections, user connections, logouts per second, and top 10 databases by active user connections. Now, you may be wondering what are the longest running queries? And yes, uh, SQL's App Insight for SQL will tell you about it. So you would immediately identify which SQL queries are expensive, meaning it's taking a long time to execute uh, to, for the user. Okay, because of yeah, the this information. Normally, outer joins or joins in SQL are expensive to the resources. So you may this is something that you will return to your database admins, or if you are the application developer of the the the, the, the application, this is something that you want to take a look at. Your application is running this, it's taking a long time for it to be executed for a user. So you may want to optimize your SQL query itself. So that is App Insight for SQL, okay? Are there any questions or concerns about App Insight, guys, before we move on to API pollers? They bought the whole grocery. That's why it's taking a long queue. <laughs> <laughs> taking a long queue. And if you if you can imagine, let's say that person said to the cashier, "Oh, give me five minutes, okay? I'll, I'll, I forgot something," and then the cashier, "Okay, I'll wait for you." But then this person did not return <laughs> because that person met some other person. Oh, you you're my friend. Oh, it's been a long time that we haven't met, and then he forgot that there is a grocery that he still needs to check out. That is yeah, just the. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, just a quick question with regards to App Insight for SQL. Does it take account latency, um, bandwidth latency, if uh, messages are starting to queue for the SQL? Uh, latency itself? Yeah, there are latencies, uh, latency metrics in here. Mm, from what okay, I see. thank you. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Okay. DV, I understand, you know, why only Windows? It's not all about Windows this time, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, that can be a feature request 
that should be uh, posted. What about App Insight for Apache, App Insight for Linux applications, right? Uh, I can find components used by App Insight from the demo site. You can find it in the template. It's a Rob. Remember, App Insight are just set of templates, right? Okay, so let's now proceed, guys, to one of the... I, I, would, I know that you've been waiting for this, one of the topics that you've been waiting for, API pollers. But we're, we're still... We would still uh, discuss how to build custom templates and how to build scripts, okay? Or how, how the SAM monitor scripts, okay? I know we only have uh, 30 minutes remaining. I may need... 30 more minutes from the lab time to cover the other topics, okay? And then from there, you can complete your labs with the remaining one and a half hour. And also with that remaining one and a half hour, guys, you can take your lunch break, you can uh, ask questions, you can, we can do a recap, okay? Of whatever topic that you like to do a recap. Sure, we can do that, okay? But for now, let's just complete the agenda, okay? So API pollers, uh, this is one of the features that has been introduced to SAM as of version 2019.4. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, product manager, but yeah, API pollers 2019.4. Uh, but right now it has been improved. Uh, this is a great thing to have in SAM because beyond application templates beyond all these things that we covered like server hardware health cloud monitoring container maps agents templates app insight beyond that you want to get more out of sam right what if you have an application that you want to monitor that is external to your application or any other external or third-party application that you want to monitor as quickly as possible the, the quickest way to monitor that third-party application without writing any scripts or code is by the use of APIs, okay, or API endpoints. And the good news is Sam can now do that, okay? But before we move on to API pollers, I just wanted to set proper expectations about licensing, okay? Because that's, that's important. And in your participant's guide on page... Uh, page 19 okay so it will tell you about the links for or more information about api polar requirements licensing alerts yeah you can alert on api polars you can even report on it you can put it in perf stack it's also existing in app stack <laughs> okay so that's the good thing there if you just want to integrate any application to sam without writing any code or single line of code or script. If there is an API for it, Sam can do that, okay? So let's look into licensing for starters, because this is what's, what matters anyway, right? So how many metrics can you monitor in Sam? That's the question, right? So that's the million dollar question there. How many metrics can you, how many API metrics or API endpoints can you monitor in Sam? The answer is it depends on your license. Here's the thing. For example, if you're in the node-based licensing, okay? By the way, guys, before we move on here, remember, for API pollers, it has to be assigned to at least one node, okay? So if you're in the node-based licensing, if you implemented API pollers, it will use up an API license or a, a, a SAM node license. But, but here's the thing. Uh, how many metrics can you monitor? That's the question, right? So, for example, let's take into account this. You are in SAM 10 license. This is one of the SAM node-based licensing tiers. SAM 10 meaning you can monitor up to 10 servers or 10 SAM nodes. Okay? So, SAM 10, how many metrics? These are the scenarios. You can monitor 10 metrics or 10 values with one API polar on one node. So the number here is your limit. That's your total amount of metrics. What about this next scenario? You can monitor five metrics on two API polars on one node, or you can diversify. So for example, you have three servers. For, for each server, there is one API polar, one metric, one API polar on three servers. So that's three metrics, right? 
and then two metrics with one API polar on one server, so that's two values. And then one value with five API polars on one node, so that's five different API polars, so that's five metrics or five values. So that's three plus two plus five is equal to 10 sum licenses. Okay, so it's gonna, these are the limit as to how many metrics you can monitor in SAM for API polars. Are we clear with this? What about if I am with the component base? Okay. Actually, guys, if you're in the component based licensing, you can still use API polars, but you just have to refer to this chart. Okay. Here's the thing for every component based license tier that you have, there is an equivalent node based license for it. So if you're in the ALX, I know it's unlimited, but the equivalent of that is SAM 300. So if you're in ALX license, you cannot monitor unlimited number of API polars. You can only monitor up to 300 API polars. If you're in AL2500, that's equivalent to SAM200, so you can monitor up to 200 API polar metrics. Okay. Now, if you're as mentioned here, if you are wondering, are is there SAM5000 and beyond? Yes, there is, but you have to contact sales for that. It's not mentioned here. Okay. If you exceed license limit, there will be a, a pop-up. It's fail-safe, so. You'll be reminded anyway, but I just want to set proper expectations here, and I hope we are clear with this. Are there any questions with API polars and licensing? Questions? Make sure, guys, that you understand this because one of the SCP exam objectives for SAM, I believe, includes this. But, you know, uh, just remember that the SAM node base number here would be the number of API metrics that you can monitor up to this number. And if you're in the component base, just refer to the equivalent node base license tier. Okay. All right, so enough of licensing. Let's proceed to the actual demo. Let's do some action here, okay? So how do we implement um, API Polar? So here's the thing, guys. Let me show you uh, our Pingdom uh, server. So here's the thing, um, or this is the situation. Let's say we want to um, monitor. Let me just open my Pingdom account here. Hold on. Let's say here's the situation, guys. We have we have a website that we are monitoring in a different application okay it's not monitored in solar winds you're not using wpm or whatever but you are using this application called pingdom which is also from solar winds but you want to integrate pingdom metrics with sam okay so if you look at pingdom here as you guys can see if we look at experience monitoring and choose uptime within pingdom you would have this solar winds sites monitored by pingdom so if you click on uh this particular website you would see the uptime you would see all these information about the website what if you want to integrate some of the metrics from here to sam so that all you just have to do is open sam don't need to open pingdom and you can create reports for it you can alert on it you can do whatever you want with it you can put it in app stack perf stack whatever how is it done the good news is with pingdom it offers its api endpoint okay so you guys can integrate Pingdom to SolarWinds SAM using API, and this is how you should do that. So the first thing to do really, okay, on any application that you want to integrate in SAM using API is to, is to consult the documentation of that website or of that application, okay? Check if the documentation offers API endpoints, okay? If it does, then, you're in, good, you're, you're in a good uh, situation because you can use uh, SAM API polars to monitor that, okay? So I already did that homework for you. I already consulted Pingdom documentation. I looked at the, 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 the admin guide and it's telling me, okay, this is how you would 
uh, monitor ping dong metrics from an external application via API. So I already got that info. The first thing to do really, okay, is to create this what we call um, application key, okay? Normally for API polling or API monitoring, you would create that application uh, key first. Um, the application keys based on the documentation can be found for pingdom, okay? It can be found on my.pingdom.com slash app slash account slash app keys. But of course, your your application will be different from here. This is only me, okay? Uh, so I have, so there are already application keys created here. The key or the application key would be your, my name is of key, okay, to um, integrate Pingdom with Sam, okay? So once you have the application key, right, the next thing is to go to Sam. Itself, right so how do we do that let's go to server and application monitor let me open my uh, prepared installation demo server here because the orion server I, I i know that it will give a problem <laughs> so i prepared this ahead of you guys or ahead of this class so we're gonna implement an api polar here in the in a, in a, in a, in a clean server all right so let's go to like what, like what I said earlier, API polars must be implemented on a node, okay? So you can click on settings and choose manage nodes, or you can go to the home page, look for the node. Um, Windows, let's choose Orion server, okay? Let's just tag our API polar to this Orion server, okay? Or you know what? Let me open another site so that you will have a better view, guys, okay? Well, give me one second here. What is the IP address of this guy? Okay. Forty-five. Okay. Now this is a better view, right? Okay. Let's do it again. Um, home page. <clears throat> well, all nodes. Ryan. Okay. And you will see this button under management. Okay. That says API Polar Management. Okay. You can assign polars. Well, actually, as of 2020.2 version of SolarWinds, we offered or we already implemented this update called assigning API polars. So it's like templates in SAM that has been created for you. So you would see those API polars already built in from SAM. So there are API polar templates as well. But remember, guys. This is not the same as the regular templates, okay? Look at the number of metrics. You would always look at this one. So the, again, your license count will be the hard limit for the up to how many metrics you can monitor, okay? So, but as you guys can see here, there are polars or API polars for specific applications like Atlassian, JetBrains, Microsoft 365, Microsoft Azure, if this is still a baby feature, I am sure next year there will be more API polars. So just watch out for the update. Okay? Like what DV said, what about Linux? <laughs> I completely understand where you're coming from. But this is a baby feature. Please be patient. We'll be adding more here. I'm sure about that. So um Let's create our let's create a, a, an API polar from scratch. So let's click on create. Okay. And here we go. This is their interface for the API polar. So we'll fill in the blanks. The first thing to do here is to enter or press configure button and enter the credentials. So we're gonna click on we're gonna title this to API polar APJ. Uh, was that November 3? 
Okay. Uh, monitors. Ping dong. Website uptime. For solar winds. Okay. So um, you can choose whether you'd like to communicate over SSL. Or what about the authorization? We support basic. We support OAuth. We support bearer token. We support API key authentication. It depends on what's in the documentation of the external application that you want to monitor in SAM. Okay. But I'm not going to use SSL in my case. And I'll just use basic authorization just for the sake of demo. Okay. But of course, requirements will change depending on what you want to monitor. Credentials, there's none here. Let's create a new one. And let's test, let's create this as, okay, so. Password, open sesame, <laughs> yeah. copy paste that works, does not work. Okay, save. Uh, Save. Okay. That's the step one. Okay. Now, uh, this one, request URL. Okay. Based on, so you have get and post here. We support both get and post methods. Now, the request URL would be this one. This is all based from the documentation of Pingdom. Okay. The header would be account email. Account email is, there you go. Okay, and one more thing would be app key. Okay, and this is the application key. Remember, the app key is very important. This is your key to communicate to Pingdom via API. Without the app key, forget about it. Send requests. Okay, so right now it says here, okay, response code HTTP uh, code number 200. 200 means good. Okay, response time is 1,129 milliseconds. Uh, checks, well, if you do have, well, we do have two websites in there, solarwinds.com. If we go back to pingdom, pingdom.com. Yeah, solarwinds, pingdom, login. Hello, SolarWinds Experience Monitoring Uptime. There are two websites, solarwinds.com and support.solarwinds.com. That's why when you go here, it has solarwinds.com and the other one, the other guy is support.solarwinds.com. So it depends on what you want to monitor, okay? Okay. Now, the good thing here is that when you press this button, you can now begin monitoring the value, right? That's amazing. So if you click on, let's say, I want to monitor solarwinds.com last response time and the status. Let's, let's monitor status, you know. Uh, Ryan display status. Uh, that's solarwinds. I can rename it. Okay, solarwinds.com status. Uh, you can put thresholds as well. But there is there is no threshold for the at least for one I don't you remember that the at least can uh, for consecutive polls and for at least x out of y polls you don't have that. You only have greater than and static value on a single poll. Okay? Um So yeah, these are the things that you can do here. Okay? Um let's press save. Okay, so any, any any save metrics that you're monitoring will be showing up here under stored values. So this is already one metric. Okay, if you're in SAM 10 license, you are you have remaining nine metrics to to monitor or API metrics to monitor. Aside from status, last response time. I want to monitor last response time. You can put thresholds. Let's say if it's more than 2,000, give you a warning. If it's greater than 5,000, there, okay? So you now have two metrics stored. All right, so just press save, and that's it. That's how you would monitor 
API pollers in SAM. API pollers now, if it's monitored, you can see it in app stack. It's like this. Okay? You go to details of that. And you can cor it co already correlate with other ones. Okay? Imagine having that website not only in IP monitor, not only in Pinga, but in WPM. And it's in app stack and it's in SAM. You know, they can give you the, a complete picture of what's going on. And also API pollers, guys, can contribute to the overall node status. If this was this was covered by Eric, if you go to settings, all settings, you go to child status, participation, right? Under thresholds and polling. Okay, API pollers are also contributors to that. Um I just don't see the option here for some reasons, but it could it could be not being monitored uh, completely yet. But it should be here. It's one of the contributors as well of the node's status uh, anyway. But in app stack, in perf stack, say uh, home, and then you went to performance analysis. If you add entities here, you can see API polars. Okay, and then let's say you added your server out here or you added your application, okay? So you can already correlate those information, okay? You can put the, the status of that API polar, or you can show the related, uh, was that related entities? Yeah, this one. An API polar monitored value. So you can put last response time. You can put solarwinds.com. Right? So metric average of solarwinds.com and all that you can correlate it. And imagine if you have WPM, you put the website in here. And if you have SAM, you see how they're all integrated, right? So that's the good thing with, with API polars. It can be in perf stock, it can be in app stock. You can report on it, you can alert on it, do whatever you want with it. As long as it's in the Orion platform, you can do whatever you want. Okay? So are there any questions or concerns about um, API polars in general? Clear? All right, before we move on to the next part of our bootcamp with regards to building and implementing custom templates, let's go for a short of uh, three minute break. Okay, just go just go to the toilet or stretch or uh, rest your eyes for, for three minutes and then we'll continue with this topic, okay? Sounds good? So I'll turn on my timer here and um, Talk to you again, guys, in the next uh, three minutes, and then we'll proceed with building and implementing custom templates, as well as script monitoring.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that short break. <laughs> Are you here? So I verify with you guys. Please don't leave. <laughs> we still have don't a couple leave. of topics. <laughs> yeah, we uh, don't leave yet. <laughs> yeah, we still have lab exercise until 6 p.m. Singapore time. Are you here? Yes, no. My chat window seems to have disappeared for some reason. Yeah. Or there, there has to be a, a latency at some of some sort. <laughs> okay, Prabhat, Songpon, Ragavender, DV, thank you very much. And for the rest of you guys, please stay. We still have other topics to cover. Okay. And also the lab exercises. We still have that. Okay. But we just don't want to, you know, ignore your questions or your concerns about a topic because yeah, this is the perfect opportunity to discuss these things, right? During boot camp. But we can't afford to also prolong the discussion or very become very much detailed about it because of the time. I hope you understand that side as well, okay? Well, without further ado, guys, let's continue with building and implementing custom templates. And this is not really a huge topic anymore because you've seen how Sam uh, has these templates that are built in or pre-installed, but there will be a time that you will be building your own template because Sam doesn't really have it yet. Okay? Or you have this application that doesn't have a, an out-of-the-box template. And, um, you will do that, that will be the time that you will be building your own. <clears throat> okay, so steps in creating custom templates is Sam is no different in managing or implementing out of the box templates. The very first thing, really, the very first step that you would take into account when you build or implement templates from Sam is to identify what are the aspects of that application that you want to monitor. That's the very first thing to do. Is it so let's say you want to monitor Minecraft. What are, what are the different aspects of Minecraft that you want to monitor? Is it a process? Is it a service? Is it a port? Is it a file directory of Minecraft that you want to make sure that it's not compromised? Or let's say you want to monitor the Orion server. Uh, how do you monitor the Orion server? What are the services involved? that makes up the Orion server that you want to make sure that it's up and running? Or do you need to monitor certain ports? Do you need to monitor a certain folder in the Orion server that should not be compromised up, up, to, a, up to a certain extent? So those things, once you have planned that out, it'll be a lot easier to execute the plan because it's just in SAM. And the good news is, it's easy to, to implement that. Uh, there are two tools available in SAM to create templates from scratch by the use of Component Monitor Wizard. And the other one is by just simply pressing New Template from the Manage Application Templates screen. Okay. Um, we'll also look into the Component Monitor library, and later on, I'll be introducing you to the script monitor. So here's our scenario here, guys. Uh, in my Orion server here and go back to the main page. All right. Um, I want to monitor uh, the Orion server. Okay. So I want to build my own template. If I click on manage applications, well, the very first thing before you build your own template is, of course, search. Search first, right? Maybe the template already exists. So you you can save a lot of time. If it's but at this point, let's just imagine that you look at some built-in templates, you'll even look on Thwap, it does not exist. So now is the time to create your own template. So there are two ways. You can click on create new template here, or you can go for the component monitor wizard. Let's go for the component monitor wizard at this point. So how do we access Component Monitor Wizard? Um, it's under Settings, and we'll just have to choose All Settings. And we can click on uh, SAM Settings under Product Specific Settings. And we can click on Component Monitor Wizard. So again, 
settings, all settings, some settings under product specific settings, and we can just simply click on component monitor wizard from here. Component monitor wizard is the easiest method in building your custom templates. But as you guys can see here, there are common uh, monitor, com co common component monitor types in here. But remember what I said earlier or before, there are 49 different component monitors. And as you guys can see, this is not even 49. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight component monitors only. These are just the most common ones. If you want to have another component monitor to build, then you would go not for the component monitor wizard, but the new template thing that you saw earlier, right? So let's say I want to monitor my Windows or my Orion server, and it is composed of a couple of Windows services. So let's choose Windows service monitor in this example, okay? Uh, let's click next. And let's choose the server. So let's click browse and choose the Orion server. Okay. Now remember credentials, guys. You can choose to inherit the credential from Node or you can nominate your own credential in here. Let's try to choose inherit credential from Node 64 bit and press next. And hopefully the services will be shown. If not, then it's the it's a credential issue. So, SolarWinds services for sure. So if this is letter A. It's alphabetically arranged. So I just sorted it descending here so we could see. By the way, there's no search option here. I wish there is, but there's none. You have to look for it manually. Uh, solar wind. So there, solar winds information service version three. This is the database service. Solar winds collector service. This is the one that collects the information from MSMQ. All those things that I'm telling you guys is part of the Orion architecture. So there's actually a bootcamp for it. It's called architecture and design. If you want to know more about it, please attend that bootcamp. Um, what other solar winds? Services, trap services, syslog services, recommendations, cortex, alerting. I think I'm good for now. All right. Um, let's just imagine, guys, that at this point, of course, before doing all these things, you have already planned out these things and you have been given the requirements that, okay, let's monitor the Orion server and these are the services that you want to monitor. Okay. So yeah, we have selected those services and we'll just press next. And from now, you can then choose multi-edit. Remember, you can do multi-edit and set up the thresholds in bulk, but let's just leave it all by default. Let's uh, pretend or imagine that you have set all the thresholds, all the nodes and all that stuff. Because again, you are creating a template here, guys. Okay. Um, let's do a testing. Okay. Set that. No, the test node is already set. Let's just press the test button. If there is a different credential to use, you can click on assign credentials just in case. All right. But I'm hoping that the inherit credential from node will have their necessary privileges. Remember what inherit credential from node is. Inherit credential from node means it's gonna use the same credentials that have been used to add the node during the discovery process. So this is successful, okay? And let's choose next. And you can either create a template or add it to an existing application monitor. But what we want here is to create a new template. Okay. So this is just choose next. Now at the moment it is assigned to the Orion server, but if you have other solar wind servers out there in your environment that you want to monitor using this template, go ahead and select them. But for now I'm good with this. I'll just choose next. And there you have it. It's how you would create your custom template using the component monitor wizard. Like I told you guys, this is the quickest web method for you to create your own 
template. Later on, I'll show you the long method, okay? I'll show you the new template form, okay? But for now, we're good with this. Let's just press OK, Create. So it's going to tell you all done. If you click on View Summary, view the SAM Summary page, you would have that Orion Server Monitor template. Remember, guys, the reason why it's gray is because it still needs to perform its initial polling. If you click on the application monitor here, um, if you click on the application monitor here, as you guys can see here, initial poll is in progress. So let's give it some time before it shows up the actual information. Okay? So... That's it actually for creating custom templates using Component Monitor Wizard. But let's modify the template itself and let's add more component monitors in that template, okay? Um, so let's go back <coughs> to the applications and let's choose SAM Summary once more. And then we'll click on Manage Applications, okay? And then we'll look for that Orion Server Monitor template well, actually, from here, um, if you press edit properties, it's going to modify the application monitor. But we don't want to modify the application monitor. We want to modify the template. Remember, any changes you made in the template is going to apply to all the application monitors based on that template until you override the template, right? So let's look for that Orion uh, monitor. Orion server monitor template seven components let's press edit so um let's imagine at this point that the management wants to add additional monitoring capability in your template it also need let's say they said that okay apart from the windows for solar with services anyone in there that's not on mute please press mute for now thank you um at this point, guys, under component monitors, let's add component monitor here. So let's say the management, okay, or the one that gave you the requirement said that, okay, let's monitor additional stuff in here. Let's monitor the, uh, let's monitor the temporary directory of the Orion server that is used for polling. Because if that temporary directory is compromised, that can mean that the polling will stop or it will definitely impact polling and we don't want that to happen, okay? It can be an avenue for a cybersecurity attack. You know, if you want to penetrate the organization IT infrastructure, you need to turn off the cameras, right? You need to turn off the monitoring. They will bring down solar winds so that there, will, there won't be alerts that will show up so they can do whatever they want and wreak havoc on the infrastructure. So what they can do is they can compromise the temporary directory of the Orion server that hosts the JET files. JET files in SolarWinds are database files, okay, that is used for polling. It's normal for those JET files to like, for, for being let's say 100 JET files or maybe 1,000 JET files, but it's not normal for the JET files to become huge. I mean, it's not normal for JET files to become 3,000 or 65,000 that, that can definitely impact polling already. So they can, they, can perf they can inject, you know, fake JET files in that temporary directory that could compromise your SolarWinds monitoring. So we want to monitor that temporary directory. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, what I did from here is I'll, I have clicked on Add Component Monitors. And like I told you guys, there are 49 different SAM monitors or component monitors available out there. Okay, um, we want to look for a File Component Monitor here. And we want to select the File Count Monitor because we want to count the number of JET files in a certain folder called temporary Windows Temporary Directory folder. We want to set up thresholds that it should not exceed this amount of JET files before we can consider it abnormal or, you know, uh, alarming. 
So file count monitor it is. Let's choose add. And you will now have this file count monitor. So let's just document uh, the description here for the file count monitor. So what are we counting? What file are we counting? We're counting JET files, okay, in the C Windows temporary directory, which can prevent new database connections and cause polling to halt. We don't want that to happen because that can be an avenue for a cybersecurity attack. This monitor should be less than 65,530 JET files, okay? Um, so let's put up some thresholds in here. It shouldn't be greater than 3,000. If it's already 3,000, it should give you a warning already. If it's uh, 65,000, yeah, really need to take it that much seriously, right? But you should already be, you should already raise your eyebrows if it's already 3,000. So, uh, but we're not yet done here, okay? We need to tell SolarWinds or Sam, okay, you want to monitor the number of jet files, but where do I have to look for the jet files? So you need to indicate the full directory path in here. Guys, remember this button, okay? How do I configure this component? How do I configure this component will inform you how to configure this particular component. It will tell you the documentation about what is this, what is this, what is this, and what, it, what, what are all these things all about, okay? But what's important for now is the full directory path. Um, the full directory path is this. All right. So IP is the uh, IP address of your server, the C Windows temporary directory. So we're looking for, or we're scanning the C Windows temporary directory, but what files are we talking about here? So we will be filling out the file extension filter. So we're looking for uh, jetstar.tmp, okay? So anything that begins with the word jet, okay? And as long as it has the extension name of .tmp, these are jet files. We have solar wind. So we're looking for the number of jet TMP files. And let's count that, right? Um, and let's, of course, change Oh. OK. It locked up on me. OK, let's try it again, guys. Sorry about that. Oh, come on. <laughs> it didn't respond on me. Okay. All right. Let's do it again. Why not? All right. Let's move on, guys. Let's try it again. Add component monitors, right? File count, right? So add. That's why it's the best practice to press save and continue working, just so it happened to you like what you saw. You will you won't lose much progress, right? But anyway, let's move on. Um, all right, so there you go. What is the file that we're counting? Let's rename this to file count monitor jet files. So we would know, okay? It's not just plain file count monitor. What file are you counting? <laughs> you, you have to be specific. That can, that can document already what it's trying to do. Uh, full directory path would be this. Okay, and the file extension filter, jetstar.tmp. Save and continue working, please. Okay. All right, 3,000 and 65,000 on a single polling cycle, okay? No thresholds, no allowance, because this is a serious thing, right? If it's already reached 3,000, to raise your eyebrows already. 65,000, oh, you really have to fix it. 
ASAP before everything's too late. So we're done with the file count monitor. See if I continue working again, just so I don't lose my progress. Set the test node. Okay. And then choose um, Orion server, of course. <clears throat> and let's press the test button. It's going to take up some time because it's going to count the number of files. Oh, test failed because directory is not found. Okay, because of the credentials could be inherit credentials from now. Let's try that. Set this press the test button. Are there any questions so far or concerns that you might have? Uh, Luang, the solar with support for monitoring industrial control systems. Um, you can search the template for it. Uh, Luang, if it doesn't, then you can create your own template, just, just like what I'm showing you right now. It will support it as long as you have the credentials for it, or if it does have an API, you can. Okay. All right, test fail with down status. Doesn't let me do that, right? Um, assign credentials. Let's try a different credential. No. Um, credential name, admin. The username is... I was hoping that I have the privileges to do that. Test. I'm sure it's credentials, guys. Hang on, give me a give me a moment here. All right, let's try this uh, service account credential, okay? Yeah. 
I am sure that this is about uh, the uh, the credentials. But for now, let's just uh, skip this. Okay, let's just press save and continue working. If it if it if it passed, it will definitely tell you the amount of jet files anyway. Okay, but that's how you would how you would do it. Let's just imagine at this point that there are numbers that are shown here based on the results. Okay. Um, but let's add another component monitor here, guys. And let's choose uh, network protocol component monitors. Also, one more requirement from the management is to monitor Rabbit MQ port 5672. So how do we monitor a port? We just select network protocol component monitor, select TCP port monitor, and press add. Okay, so let's rename this. Let's rename this to uh, Rabbit MQ port. Okay, CCP port monitor. So, um, in this case, let us document now five six seven one guys port five six seven one. So this monitor returns information about port five six seven one. So under port number, you will type in five six seven one in here. You can even monitor response times. And put thresholds in that if you want, but I'll just skip the details for that. Uh, just press if you continue working and let me test Ryan server and press the test button. Okay, there you go. So the test is successful with up status on Ryan. Let me try one more thing. Okay, uh, I was hoping that it'll work, but if not, then we can move on. And the Orion dash service, Orion dash service. Sign credentials. Yeah, it's not really letting me do that. Could be that the directory itself is uh, hidden or disallowed based on group policy. So that that requires further troubleshooting. But let's, let's just fast forward and let's let's say we have resolved this. It or eventually mentioned. The amount of jet files and remember we have set up thresholds you don't you don't want your jet files to reach these numbers right because if it does then it, that will definitely raise your eyebrows and it should alarm you already right um so that's it that's how you would create your your template from scratch from the component monitor wizard and add more component monitors as you move along so let's just press submit and again, whatever changes that you made in the template level is going to impact all the application monitors based on that template. Okay. So are there any questions so far, guys? Now notice that the other the other uh, components are green now because earlier it was gray, right? Because of the initial polling. But this time, it's the file count and TCP monitor that are gray because it performs its initial polling. But it, it will eventually turn out whatever the status of that initial polling results later on, after five minutes, after 300 seconds, right? Uh, Warada is asking, can you explain more about what's the case when we have to use JMX? Um, Unfortunately, at this point, I cannot explain further on specific uh, applications, okay, because that would take up more of our time, Rada. But let me give you a quick overview about that. For JMX, uh, you can search for application monitor templates, okay, 
and you do have these uh, JMX uh, templates available, okay? Like Glassfish, JBoss, IBM WebSphere, and Oracle WebLogic, okay? But if you want to know more about the, the, the template itself, what it does, uh, what's in that, just press edit template, and it's going to give you all the different component monitors or JMX monitors available. Okay, well, there is actually a, uh, a template, some template guide available. Okay, and I, I think I shared that to you guys yesterday regarding uh, templates. So some template reference. Okay, if you want to know more details about the different SAM templates available. So we have a, a PDF document for that. Uh, I can copy the link and share it in chat with you uh, for the complete template reference. But for JMX, okay, JBoss or JMX, um, you can always refer to the, uh, the documentation, okay? So it's going to give you all the details about it. All right. Thanks, Varada. I hope you understand. Um, so the complete details are on the documentation. Okay. So let's now proceed, guys, to our next and final example for the bootcamp and also for this topic about building templates. Okay. One application is down because, yeah. Uh, remember the file count monitor? Yeah, it is down because it's not, it does not exist. Although you can change, right? You can change the overall rolled up status of your, your nodes, right? Remember what Eric covered yesterday regarding enhanced node status? You can group, you can change the roll up, whether it's mixed, best or worst status. But I'm not gonna go through that. At this point, I will show you guys scripts in SAM. Uh, SAM supports uh, Windows and Linux scripts, but for Windows scripts, okay, so SAM script monitoring, okay, for Windows scripts, it supports uh, the following uh, languages. Give me just uh, a few moments here to search for that. So the SAM Windows Script Monitor. So these are the languages. I just, I'm looking for it. Yeah, I'm going to get back to you on that. Um, but it supports Delphi, it supports um, Python, it supports VBScript, and all the other, and some other languages out there. I, I'm just looking for that list. But scripts in SAM uh, is, is, a, is one way for you guys to monitor servers using scripts. But remember, okay, if you write scripts, okay, and ask technical support to fix those codes for you, technical support won't be able to assist you on that. It's uh, Windows uh, scripts don't are not covered by the warranty or whatever support. Okay, you're on your own with scripts, but we can always show you where to put those scripts in SAM. And if you're sure that the scripts work outside of SAM, then we can figure out what's going on within the SAM environment. That technical support can help you on that, okay? But if the script itself is broken, you have to fix it on your own. So let me show you guys an example here or a scenario. So the scenario is we want to monitor, um, we want to monitor the certificate expiration of our server, okay? We want to monitor the certificate expiration of uh, a few certificate stores. So how do we go uh, go about in doing that? So let me just open my Orion server here. Okay. Okay. 
So as you guys can see here, what I did was I went to application SAM summary and then just uh, click on manage applications and the second tab, same thing, application monitor templates. What I'll be doing here is press this button that says create new template. I'm not gonna go through the component monitor wizard, okay? Reason is component monitor wizard doesn't have a script monitor option there. It's just Windows services, Linux, to name a few, but it doesn't contain the complete list of component monitors that I can use. So like, let's click on create new template here. So if you press create new template, you'll be filling in the blanks manually. Okay. So let's uh, name this certificate expiration. Okay. Um, description. So I have already prepared that uh, ahead of time. So uh, this one, it monitors, monitors root, the auth root stores, provides status for up to 10 certificates per store. If it will not expire within that window, then it presents the earliest to expire certificate for that store and presents how many days to expire. Okay. Um, What's next in here? Save and continue working so we don't lose our progress. But as you guys can see, before you can save and continue working, you, you should at least add one component. Anyway, let's um, change the polling frequency. Well, actually, I'll just leave the polling frequency to 300 seconds here. All right. Advanced. Uh, I'm not going to change anything here. Yeah, sure, 64-bit. Why not? But if the script runs on 32-bit, uh, just leave it to 32 bit. Anyway, you guys can always change this anyway. Um, component monitor. So let's add a component monitor here and we'll choose custom script monitors. Now, the method to monitor certificate expiration is written in Windows PowerShell. Although, guys, I have to tell you that you also have Linux or Unix if you have Perl scripts out there. Or maybe you have Python. If you have Python, then you use Windows Script Monitor for that. Okay. But this script is, is written in PowerShell. And let me set your expectations, guys, that I am not the one who wrote this script. I want to give credit to the one from Thwack. I actually imported this script from Thwack and presented it to you as if it does not exist. But I just don't want to claim that I'm the one who created it. <laughs> okay. I remember the guy, it's, his name is Serco Dash Paul or Serco Paul from Thwack. He's the one who created this script, so we'll just re, re implement it as if it does not exist. But it came from him. Okay. So I want to give the credit when it's due. So Windows PowerShell it is, right? So add. And save and continue working. Oh, it doesn't let me. <laughs> what if everything shut down? I have to. Do this all over again. Come on. Anyway, so I will need to put some description here. Before that, let's rename this uh, the, this thing to put certificate. So I would already know what am I monitoring here. So. Uh, script arguments, it should be this, right? And the script body, for you to modify the script body itself, you can click on edit script. Okay, so script body, this is where you would put the script itself. So I will be copying and pasting this script created by Circle Paul and put it here. Okay, so copy and put it there. Uh, this is the script snippet. Notice, guys, that there are exit codes. Exit codes in SolarWinds or in the script itself. Uh, this is used if you want to return, uh, if you want the script to return to specific values to, to Sam. Exit, exit code zero means it's up. Exit code one, it means it's down. Actually, there's a documentation for it. Exit codes in Sam. So report status through exit codes. It's also in your participants guide. Okay, so this is the link in chat 
for the status of the exit codes. Zero is up, one is down, two is warning, three is critical, four is, well, any other value is unknown. So if you want to return warning to Sam, if you want to return down or up, just put your snippet with an exit code of zero, just like this example. And in the example that we have, right, here, so exit code two, this is the snippet of it, okay? Exit zero, everything is good, right? As you guys can see, no certificate will expire within the next how many days or whatnot. So from here, once you have pasted the script itself in the script body, we will be uh, choosing the node, of course, to run it against to. But this is only a testing. It's not going to implement it right, right away, okay? Don't think that when you select this, it's going to run the script on that node. No, not yet. Specified credential, yeah, important, right? You want to make sure that the credentials have the ability to execute scripts, okay? And once you're done with credential, once you're select, once you selected the node, you can then go ahead and press this button that says "Get Script Output." So, I was hoping that the Orion server policies have you know, not been restricted. Because <laughs> earlier when we did the file count monitor for some reasons, it didn't cooperate. Anyway, so press save. And at least I can save and continue working. All right, okay, great. Execution mode, you can run this on a local host. You can run this within the Orion server itself, or you can run this remotely using PowerShell remoting. If PowerShell remoting is enabled on remote server, you can do it on a remote host execution. Okay, so that's the good thing about there. Now, again, for more details on how to configure the component monitor, just always click this link, or you can always refer to the success center for further information. Okay, so uh, we're done with root certificate, but we're not yet done. We're going to add more component monitors, okay? Um, but we're almost done here. Let's click on add component monitors. Let's choose PowerShell again. Because remember, in our description, we still need to monitor auth, root, CA, and personal. So we're done with root. We'll proceed with the other ones, okay? So um, auth root certificate. Oh. Auth root certificate. Rename that to auth root certificate. And uh, same same uh, argument. Okay, for the for the script. Okay. And the body of that. If you want the script for your own, just search THWACK, type certificate monitor, you'll find the same template for that or for this, okay? So I just pasted the script body, same thing that I did, run it against the Ryan server with a specific credential and get the script output. Okay, good. No certificate will expire. So far, so good. And let's press save and continue working just so we don't lose the progress. And one more component monitor. We're not yet done here. Um, this one is the CA certificate. Okay. So PowerShell again. But you can mix and match. It's not over. Let's say you have a bash or another let's say a Python script, you can you can insert other scripts out here. It's just so happened that all these certificate monitors are written in PowerShell by Sir Copal. So let's rename this as CA certificate, okay? And uh, script body, or actually script argument, it's the same thing. Oh, we forgot the dollar. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and edit the script. So we're going to 
put in this guy. Put in this guy here. Okay. And same thing, run against the Orion server uh, with this node, with this credential, and get the script output. Okay, good. So, so far, so good. No certificates will expire for all of these stores. Uh, that is only for the Orion server, but what about other servers, right? So if you want to implement this to other servers, this is a great way for you to test if other server certificates will expire, you know? So save and continue working. I think we're good. This is the template itself, certificate expiration, press submit. Actually, we haven't assigned it to any node yet. So that's, that's what we'll, we'll be doing. Certificate expiration. Okay, assign it to the node. And let's choose Orion. Let's choose multiple servers, right? So install uh, domain controller. Yeah, why not? Sure. Press next. We can test uh, the domain controller if the inherent credentials from node still works. If not, we can try another credential. Uh, everything is oh okay access is denied see it's one of the things right because the main controller prevents it could be preventing windows execution or the execution policy for powershell may be blocked for that so that has to be fixed but what about for install too or maybe my the, the, the inherent credential from node does not have the necessary privilege to execute scripts in in powershell in that server that could be another reason Access is denied. Okay. Hmm. Assign custom credential. Admin. Let's try that. Test. Yeah, it's either I don't have the necessary powers to, <laughs> to run a PowerShell for those servers. <laughs> have you tried it? Yeah, uh, go ahead, sir. Have you tried partner? Um, this is in the Academy uh, oh, lab. Okay. Lab, sir. Yeah, so. It's because uh, I have the same issue. Uh, it seems that. Um, we might need to check with our administrator with regards to the academy accounts. Right, right. So it's credentials, guys. It's credentials. Access denied. Access denied. Access denied. CA yeah. certificate, yeah, access denied. Unfortunately. But once the credentials have been fixed, then you already know what's next in here from, from, from now. So this is a great way for you guys to test it out before implementing it. So before even assigning it, you can fix the credentials first and then try it again. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, it's been a long four days that we have uh, the boot camp. And I know, guys, uh, it's been a great effort on your end, especially with this time of pandemic. But we do appreciate your time and effort for spending for this boot camp. Are there any questions, guys? That you might have at this point at this point guys let's complete the labs from whatever time we have left we would appreciate it we'll be here guys for any concerns or questions for the next hour or so and until 6 p.m singapore time okay you can go for a break you can eat your lunch or whatever you want to do with it you can you can leave if you want uh, that's okay um, actually, guys, before you leave, all right, if in case you wanted to leave, um, let, me, let me set your expectations about the SCP exam. Okay, We do have SCP exam uh, preparation guidelines, okay? 
uh, let me share the uh, link in chat. This one's for NPM, but from, from this, you know, let's click Sam. Yeah. This one is for Sam. Let me paste the link in chat. Okay, this will be your study aid or your preparation guide for the SCP exam. This one is for SAM or Server and Application Monitor. But if you're interested in taking other courses or certifications for other courses, you can click on additional exam study aids in here. Like the ones for Architecture and Design, EPA, NTA, NCM, NPM. So if you want to attend for those boot camps, please sign up for that as well. So the exam is 75 multiple choice questions. The allotted time is 90 minutes. Okay. And these are the different exam objectives. Most of actually uh, these things have been uh, covered uh, during the boot camp, alerting, reporting, uh, app stack, app insight, uh, man what, managing component monitors, uh, templates, we have covered templates, the custom template guide, I've shared that to you guys in, in chat, also the sound built-in templates, as well as, you know, troubleshooting application issues, but I have to tell you it's mostly credentials, okay, this, uh, you've seen that earlier, right, the not-so-ideal world situation that access is denied because of credentials, right, so Verify SAM component troubleshooting or component configuration issue, troubleshooting SAM. So you can see those troubleshooting topics. Why is it not working? And when you click the link, it says, how can we help you? <laughs> it should be fixed. But yeah, at least you will find here the different categories or the SAM objectives that will be uh, posted in the exam itself. Okay. Um, any questions, concerns that you might have at this point? Now that you yeah, uh, Sir Nino, now that you yes, mentioned sir. it, mo most of the problems in, in the IT world, whether um, you're a service desk agent, whether you're on site, whether you're a field support uh, engineer, it has um, something to do with credentials. 90% of the time, it's credentials. I agree. <laughs> well, uh, basically, when you're trying to access a router, uh, unable to connect to a particular switch, um, unable to pull uh, information from a database, uh, access denied application, uh, you know, you're trying to access an application. Right. It's mostly credentials. <laughs> that's the main roadblock, right? And that's why. Um, <laughs> We have, for Sam, at least I can speak for it, that's why we have implemented API polars so that mm -hmm. you could it could bridge the gap between those things. It's because, let's say, let's just put it this way, let's say you want to monitor uh, the bank account of your spouse. <laughs> do, yeah. you think the bank, the, do you think the bank will let you run scripts in their mainframes or... Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they, they, will, they will let you do that. Most right. of the banks are still using AS four hundred uh, operating systems. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, the front end. The front end is what we see in our applications, but at the back end, it's still running on mainframes or uh, yeah. assembly, assembly language, or you know, machine level code. Because not because they don't want to upgrade, but because machine level or lower level programming language is faster compared to higher level programming language yep. like Python or anything out there. That's why for government, for banks, they're still using machine or not, not machine language, assembly language. Assembly language. language. Yeah. Assembly language of Co COBOL, anything mm. that's low level. C, C language, not, not really, it's not really C exactly plus? low oh. low the C plus plus not, it's not really low level, although a lot of drivers, assemblers are still written on C. So they're it's still running on old arch arch architecture because of performance. So yeah, um if you you do no bank will let you run scripts on their servers, right? So, but if if, if banks <laughs> if if banks uh, open their API endpoints and then you can monitor it in SAM. 
So you you can see this think... oh is my spouse cheating on me or something? <laughs> <laughs> I believe we had clients uh, that um, you know um, they monitor um, API endpoints of their AS four hundred machines, and okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there were a couple of uh, I think it was in India. Uh, in India. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they yeah. have their API. Uh, endpoints exposed for in order for uh, NPM at that point, NPM and NCM to integrate with their AS400 machines. AS400 machines, I see. So they, they may have used Orion SDK for that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps That's software different. development kit because NPM out of the box doesn't have API folders. But if mm -hmm. it's if it's REST API and if you if you know coding, that will be easy in Python or yeah, Python is the easiest language to, to use. Uh, there you go. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. So, yeah, um, at this point, guys, uh, we'll be staying here for the next how many hours do we have here? One hour and five minutes. Please complete the lab exercise. I'll stop sharing my screen. The lab exercise is in the file transfer pop up. It's called SAM lab number two customizing templates exercise. Please do complete that. And if you have other questions, concerns today about the boot camp, about other SolarWinds products, we'll try to answer it within the hour. Raga Vendor, I know you need a recap on certain topics. Can you remind me of those? Let's do it right now while we're here. And for the others, if you, if you need a recap too, let, let, let us know. Let's do it now, right? There's no other time to do it while we're here. Or you can you can leave, you can stay. Yeah, let's do a recap, ask questions. Let's do it. Raga vendor, baseline thresholds. Okay. But for the rest of you guys, okay, uh, it's not required for you to listen to me or it's up to you whether you like to listen or not. Just complete the labs, do whatever you want, okay? Um, Raga vendor, uh, baseline thresholds, and app insight. Okay, anything else? A uh, quick recap on app monitored under SAM. What application is that, uh, Raga vendor? And for the rest of you guys, for as long as your attendance is complete from day one up until today, you'll be receiving the vouchers for the SCP exam. Okay. Uh, the vouchers, um, the vouchers can be registered for until 90 days. Okay. Um, so you have 90 days to prepare for the exam. Well, actually, I was, I've heard from Jonathan that the voucher, well, you know what, just, just call, just call the exam provider for more details. But from what we know that we can confirm that you have 90 days to register the voucher. And just contact the exam provider for you to schedule your exam. Uh, you will be receiving an email from our training coordinators, either from Judessa or Michelle, uh, regarding your vouchers for the SCP exam. And again, uh, if you attended the bootcamp for Sam and Ryan, the voucher that you'll be receiving will be a Sam exam voucher. No, you won't be allowed to change the exam type because your names have already been registered to the exam provider as soon as you signed up for this boot camp. All right, uh, Raga Vendor, can you share a screen on the topic? I cannot recollect for the topic. Okay, um, at this point, let's start off with 
Yeah, let, 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 me, let me share my screen. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so let me share my uh, screen right now. And I'll go for chat. So what particular uh, topic or application that you want to recap on? Well, this is the, the my, my own Orion server. It doesn't have any applications apart from this Orion server monitor template. But we can, we can open the Orion demo site so it will have more information. Let's go to Sam summary. So what do you need here? Oh, the slide says the topic. Hmm. Okay. Or you can also go to the participants guide, Rega vendor. Just open the participants guide from your end and let me know what particular topic you'd like to recap on that participants guide. Okay. But we'll start off with baseline thresholds. Okay. So I'll open another server here that has a better view of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go again. I don't have the menus. Sorry about that. So applications and SAM summary. So uh, let's start off uh, Raga Vendor with baseline thresholds, okay? So from here, for instance, you want to adjust the baseline uh, thresholds, okay? So for example, uh, we do have Citrix and app, okay, good. So if you click on edit application monitor, okay, um, so from here, okay, let's say we open one of the components, okay, and if you scroll down, as you guys can see here, or as you guys, uh, as you remember, can see here, um, it's following the template setting for the baseline data. Okay, baseline, okay, when we say baseline, that is the performance data over time. Okay, that is uh, calculated by solar winds depending on the number of days that has, been, that has been set. So by default for SAM, it's two days, although you can adjust it to a longer time period as you've seen earlier. Uh, baseline data, is calculated by performing standard deviation of the performance data over time within that time period. And what is returned by performing standard deviation? It's going to return the warning value and the critical value that is determined by the results of that standard deviation. So when we say baseline, this will be the starting point. Okay, of the of the performance or on how your particular component is or service is performing in the server. Okay, why why would you want to have that starting point? Because as you move forward, as weeks or months go by, you can use the baseline as a comparison, right? How can you if you want to benchmark the performance? of your application, you need to compare onto something, right? You can't just simply say, oh, my application is working well. What's your basis, right? 
and from the name from the word itself basis you need to have a basis or a baseline right you need to have uh, a point or a, or a data point that you can compare on to so if let's say over time okay the application is running right and the performance of that application is too far away from the baseline then it's time that you can conclude that the application is not really performing that well because it's you know it's there's a huge gap between the actual performance against the baseline but if it's not really that much far okay from the baseline then you can say that the application is running optimally so you want to you want to use that as your benchmarking tool in order for you to measure the application performance. So that's the general concept of baseline, uh, baselining and benchmarking. So from here, all right, uh, I edited the application uh, monitor, okay? Citrix and app is the name of the template, but it's implemented on SQL Server. So from here, as you can see, I have the option to choose whether I can override or just let the template settings of what it should be. So let's choose override template. And you will see this latest baseline uh, details. Okay, so if you click that latest baseline details, it should provide you information about how is it performing over time within that as you guys can see here, two days. Okay, you can change the value by pressing this change this setting. Well, but as you can see right now, there's nothing in here. Okay, because it hasn't, well, it's either, the reason why it's nothing in there is because it's either you just implemented it, it's not been two days yet. Because again, it needs, it needs uh, a specific time or it needs time for it to, calculate the baseline performance data okay, if it, if you just implemented the template you just started monitoring it how can it perform standard deviation it doesn't have enough data points to do that so it needs time in order to return a specific value okay so eventually these charts will fill up with values and it will show you what is the warning value and what is the critical. Now, if you press this use data baseline threshold, it will perform the calculation and implement the values manually in here. So it's going to write the warning value based on standard deviation of the past two days performance data. And it's going to give you the critical value based on the standard deviation of the past two, per two days performance data. Uh, is it clear now, Raga Vendor, with regards to baseline thresholds? Raga Vendor? Good. Okay. Um, but remember, the values when you press the latest baseline threshold here, uh, standard deviation is zero. The values eventually, let's say it plays 0 0.25, but after pressing this button, let's say it press here 0 0.85. Just, just an example. The values here are static until you press this button again. Okay, so there's a misconception that as uh, some 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 users think that as soon as I press use the this baseline threshold, it will be performed automatically. No, you have to go back here and press the button that says use latest baseline threshold. Because the values will definitely change over time. Because there is a new set of data points already. Okay. If you want to set up a new baseline or starting point, you have to manually perform the calculation. Okay. All right. So let's proceed with, oh, you want app stock. App stock or app inside? Oh, app stock. Okay. But you mentioned in your chat, you also need refresher on app inside. Is that correct?
Okay, sure. So we'll have app stack, we'll have app inside, and then application dependency mapping. Okay, so with app stack, um, the best way to demonstrate that is using the Orion demo site. So app stack gives you a 100,000 feet level overview of your application environment or your entire monitoring environment in general, okay? AppStap is a feature of the Orion platform. It's not specific to SAM. It's not specific to a specific product. It is a feature shared by multiple Orion products. And since this is a SAM bootcamp, we would speak for SAM, okay? And uh, it's actually one of the, the features that SAM can, can leverage on Okay, for the majority, because uh, app staff from the name itself, application staff, it can tell you the application and how it is related to other entities connected to that application. Let me give you an example. So if you go to <clears throat> my dashboards, you go to home and then choose environment and regular vendor, you can follow along if you want, you by, by just opening Orion demo, the solarwinds.com. So again, my dashboards, you go to home and choose uh, environment. <clears throat> so from here, uh, if you click on, let's say, uh, show names, it's going to give you all the in, all the different uh, entities in here. But since this is a SAM bootcamp, we're after applications. Okay. So if you click on, let's say, Microsoft Exchange application in here on West, this application is hosted on this particular West uh, server, okay? So by clicking that, notice that the other ones are grayed out, right? But if you want to clear up the clutter and only focus your attention to what you click and its relationship to other entities, you can click on Spotlight. If you press Spotlight, it's going to clear up the clutter. Now, notice the reason why it's showing you multiple Microsoft exchanges here is because this Microsoft exchange is on a database availability group or, in short, in a cluster. That's why it's showing you a lot of Microsoft exchanges related to it, okay, and multiple servers, okay. So this Microsoft exchange is... Uh, if you move your mouse over to it, you would identify that it's hosted on West EX something. So this is the server that we're talking about. Okay, even that server is showing a critical value, but if it's hosted on a virtual machine, it will show up here. If there are uh, storage related to it, it will show up here. But for now, as you guys can see here, or regular vendors, you can see here. This is the only relationship of this particular application. So how do you use this data? So you can then begin investigating this server. Why is it, why is it like this? It could be contributing to this. So AppStack can already tell you which devices or which elements that you need to pay attention to. Right? I mean, which are the ones that you need to prioritize. I'm not saying you don't prioritize the greens. Okay, but it's just so happened that you have to spend more of your time with the reds and the yellows, right? So those things. Uh, one more example, if we click uh, clear the spotlight icon there, let's choose uh, Microsoft IIS, okay, on this one. And let's hit spotlight again. Okay, this Microsoft IIS is uh, hosted by this server and it it, it tells me now that this server is on uh, Hyper-V, maybe, yeah, Hyper-V server. It's on a virtual machine. By just looking at AppStack, I can already tell that this server is a virtual machine hosted on this particular Hyper-V server. And there are also connected uh, data stores, okay, for that one, right, data stores. Volumes, lunch, pools, storage. So there's nothing to do with storage, but this particular volume is having trouble. Okay, and also this data store and the host. So you see what I'm saying, right? So this app stack can help you figure out already or identify already where to start or where the issue is coming from. 
and I already immediately identified that this server is on a virtual machine by just looking at app stack without really digging into too much details in here. So uh, app stack's hope is to help you save time in figuring out where the issue is happening. And when I say figure out, you don't figure out by just doing a wild guess. Okay, we want to fix the issue in a, in, a, in as professional manner as we can. We want to stick to the facts, not just, oh, I just heard it. Oh, based from feedback, this is what I know. We base things based on data, and this is what the facts are, are telling us, okay? And that's the, that's the thing about app stack, okay? All right, um, are, are we clear with app stack, uh, Raga Vendor? Good. Okay, this is just one method to access App Style. The other method is to get into the server itself, or you actually see that environment widget all over the place in SolarWinds. For example, in Windows, uh, you know what? I always use Windows as an example, right? Let's try Linux, <laughs> uh, Red Hat. Let's say you have an Azure Red Hat server here on Azure. So you have Red Hat server. Okay. You can see the app stack environment for Red Hat. It's like this one. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. App stack environment for Azure Red Hat. And click on view entire app stack environment. This is the app stack already built in for this Azure Red Hat. If you press show names, it's gonna make sense, right? Okay, so this is Azure Red Hat server. And I can already tell that this server is hosting SolarWinds Backup, which is red right now, and Jinx Web Server, SolarWinds Agent, and the volumes, Linux Agents, Red Hat Server. So yeah, it's under the group of Red Hat servers. But this server is running, it's currently in warning state right now. Why is it in warning state? Because of this. The application is down. Why is the application down? Go to the details and perform your investigation there. So app stack is meant to immediately tell you where the issue could be coming from. That's where you begin your investigation. As opposed to spending weeks. I even had an experience in one of the partner boot camps in Australia. One of the partners told me we have an issue. We don't know where it's coming from for a month now. So, and then when they saw App Stack, they're very excited to implement it because that can really identify the issue where it's coming from right off the bat without spending weeks, days, or even months to identify where the issue is coming from. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a nightmare, you know, to have. Okay. Um, I hope it. It, it became clear for you, Raga Vendor. And for the rest of you guys, if you're also listening here, I hope it uh, helped you at least uh, when we do these recap sessions, right? One more thing. Okay. Uh, you you want a recap on, what is this, App Insight? <clears throat> so App Insight, um, our set of templates, if you go to Sam Summary here, if you click on manage applications and go to application monitor templates, okay, you click on app insight application here, you would see these app insight templates. But these are not your ordinary SolarWinds or Thwack or custom templates. Uh, Sam app insight templates are pre installed templates from Sam that are proprietary to SolarWinds. There are components in here that have been made exclusively, okay, by SolarWinds to provide you extra information or from the name itself, insight about these applications. At the moment, there are only four App Insight applications. App Insight for Active Directory, App Insight for Exchange, App Insight for IIS, and App Insight for SQL, okay? So, if you try to modify the template, 
Okay, I think, yeah, you can edit it here. Okay, yeah, you try to modify that, the template itself. Sure, you can change the polling frequency, but you cannot really do as much with the other proprietary components. And this is not one of the 49 component monitors that you can create a custom template for. This is a SolarWinds exclusive template or component. So you can only change the description and user notes. And you cannot disable it. You can, as you guys can see here, it's just two things. Even in other ones, like Windows Event Log Monitor, it doesn't let you disable it. You can choose the thresholds, fine, single poll, X consecutive number of polls, and all those things. But you cannot disable it. Okay? So this is App Insight for AD, okay? So how does it look like? So if you click on My Dashboards, you go to Application and choose Active Directory, okay? So let's choose one of the Active Directory applications in here. Actually, one of the app inside for Active Directory here. So um, it's going to give you all these information. Okay, like application details, uh, domain. Forgive, forgive my screen because uh, this is zoomed in all the way, but we refresh this. I hope it's not going to skew my screen anymore. Yeah, there you go. It's a lot better now, hopefully. Yeah, there it is. So you can correlate these Active Directory App Insight metrics all together because as you guys can see here, it's all lined up in a chart. Or you can also correlate it with system events, replication events. I'm not gonna go through all the details here, Rack Vendor, because that's too much information with a limited amount of time that we have. I would strongly recommend that you go to the Orion demo website for you to explore it for yourself, okay? All right, um, but I can give you a quick overview again. So replication events, policy events, logon, LDAP. Um, also, the, the main controller details like this one, you would know the FISMO roles. You would know which domain controller is the schema master, the domain naming master, you know, in Active Directory terms. These are the servers that will hold the the key towards, let's say, you change the forest, okay, or you change the the organizational units, the groups, not changing the forest, but you change the grouping, you change the or, the OUs, uh, in the in the Active Directory. But where did you make that change, okay? Because let's say you have eight Active Directory domain controllers, the schema master will be, of course, the winner of the change. Okay, because for the name itself, master, if the changes are made on other domain controllers, the schema master, whatever the schema on the schema master will be the winner, will be the schema for everything. So it's, so the schema will replicate on the other ones that are not the masters or the slaves. Okay, domain naming master, let's say you change the domain name, you change the forest name, you change the trust. So yeah, it will tell you which domains, which which domain controller is the domain naming master, which domain controller is the schema master, which are which are which is the RID, which is the infrastructure manager, which is the PDC emulator, all from Sam. Okay. Uh, site details, domain services, processes and services. That's all what you have for App Insight for AD. Okay. Again, Rago event. There, um, it's easier to just dictate these things to you, but everything is in the Orion demo. I would strongly recommend that you go to the Orion demo, go to my dashboards, go to applications, and choose Active Directory. Uh, look for one of these things so you can explore it further, okay? And you can do the same things for IIS, for Exchange, and for SQL Server. There are also App Insight in there. All right. So 
I think we have already covered all the recap sessions for that. The one that you requested, uh, Riga Vendor. And for the others, guys, if you have any concerns or questions, let us know in chat. We still have 30 minutes remaining here. We'll be here, guys. Uh, if ever you have any questions, we'll stay here uh, up until 6 p.m. Singapore time. If you have any concerns about the lab, about the SCP exam, about some other SolarWinds products, we'll try our best to answer it, okay? Let us know.